Hey to y'all, my name is Brent Hamilton, Miss Trainer, to one with the Miss Trainer Trap, and today I want to talk to y'all about the Old Kingdom. The Old Kingdom is one of the dungeons that you're going to be running while you're leveling up, and as far as we can tell, it might be the best one for just grinding out some XP. I'm going to take y'all through this and talk about the pulls. Bear in mind, this is on normal difficulty, not on heroic, so you can do this on the road from 70 to 80. Now, you've got some little spiders here. These spiders do a poison AoE. See that? That ability cannot be spell reflected. I tried. The poison can be dispelled. And whenever it's cast upon someone, uh, a rogue, they can actually get a combined toxins buff just from attacking these guys, which buffs their poisons. These ones don't hit super hard. If you look at my gear here, I've got a basically a Sunwell set. Some of my stuff is the DPS version of these items. Overall, my itemization is pretty aggressive. I'm not really playing a thick mitt build, but a note here is that I do have a Sunwell geared healer. So, given that's the case, uh, I can be more aggressive than if I had a healer that wasn't quite so geared. So this is a big pull. I'm gonna just man and shout this, or challenge and shout. And the Spanish Shadow's good too. Spell effect is really important. See those caster guys? Caster Shadow Blast? That hits really hard. There's also a Web Binder. A Web Winder. These guys here. Those are the ones that root you. These Spell Flingers are the ones that cast that Shadow Blast. It'll hit your party members for about 5k to 8k. Depending on if it crits. But if you Spell Reflect it... It'll deal about 18k to 20k damage to them. So these are the slashers. Just kind of basic attacking ones. Gonna put the spell reflect on. Just gonna pop a shield wall. One thing that's pretty cool about Warrior and Wrath is they lowered the cooldown of all your big abilities. Shield wall, retaliation, and recklessness. So if you really want to be getting the most mileage and speed for your clears, you should be using them pretty liberally. You don't need to save them as a just in case. If there's a big pull where you get a bunch of stuff, pop a shield wall. Pop a retaliation, that kind of a thing. So I'm going into these pulls, putting up sweeping strikes, hitting revenge, trying to get a spell reflect. You can interrupt these as well, it's not bad. My group comp here is a rogue, an enhancement shaman, a arms warrior, and we have a resto druid doing the heals. It's a pretty good time. We've done this place many times now, so this is not our first rodeo. The secrets of this is the first boss. You can just DPS it. Doesn't hit super hard, but this boss does become immune to damage after it spawns a guardian here. We're gonna have to look for where that spawns. It could spawn at any of these little egg sack areas. Where is it? There it is. Come on, it's cool. Just pull this. And then now we can deal damage to this again. The little skitterer guys will just die to any attack. So if you just do a thunderclap, that'll clean them up. Is my this. Service. And then now we're going to do another big pull. Uh, if you're just in a regular pug group, I would probably advise against doing something risky like this. But for the purpose of showing kind of a, a speed strat here, I'm just going to pull all of this and get some spell reflects up. I'm also going to mix in a war stomp because I'm a torn. Get another spell reflect here. And I am specced into improved spell reflect, which means that I can reflect spells off my party members too. And we practiced this a few times, so my party members know that whenever I do a big pull like this, that's when we pop the big cooldowns, Blade Storm, um, Blade Flurry for the Rogue, plus Killing Spree, all that kind of good stuff. If you're new to this run, or if you're, say, level 72, 73, just pull these packs one at a time. They do hit pretty hard, especially if you don't get a Spell Reflect or an Interrupt on those Spell Flingers. Up here, we've got some Geist pulls, just a bunch of little AoE guys. They don't hit super hard, but the main risk here is 
if you pull a bunch of geists and you pull one of these big guys, the big guys do a fear. And if they fear the tank, then sometimes the aggro will switch off the tank and onto a healer. So we want to be mindful of that. I have Berserker Rage here. And in Wrath, Warriors can Berserker Rage in any stance. Battle stance, defensive stance, Berserker stance, uh, power stance, like whatever stance you're in, you can Berserker Rage. So we just pull these here. The big guys do a little enrage, they do some AoE. It's not a big deal. Just gonna put on my rocket boots. Now we have to go up here and click these two eggs. That unlocks the area to the next boss. Just gonna cleave these down. Spell affected. And we just cleave revenge, cleave revenge. So someone already clicked that egg. I'll show you my spec here real quick. I'm going for the revenge spec. So I have unrelenting assault in the arms tree. This buffs the revenge ability a whole bunch basically means that as long as you're dodging attacks you can just spam it on the gcd and you can see it's hitting for like 5.1k when it crits which is amazing he's doing killing spree there it's a good ability and he has tricks of the trade too so the threat of that just applied to me you can just right click these eggs you see here click that egg great now we're just going to rocket boost over here. We got this other pack. Frostbringers cast a frostbolt. Honestly, it doesn't hit that hard. It's like a 2k thing. It hits me for 1k. You can spell reflect it, watch. 1.3k. Pretty weak compared to the, the spider ones that cast the shadow blast. But it does slow you. And these also cast frost nova, so you might be stuck in a situation. Gonna send this guy up. Gonna be ready to berserk a rage in case he fears. And then just to talk about some of the other uh, dungeons that we've tried, I we did feast on uh, guard keep, but that one we were going through it so fast that we were hitting the instance cap, where it says you've entered too many dungeons recently. So we ended up switching over to trying to do this one. And what is the other one? Oh no, we did the Nexus. So the recommendation would probably be do the Nexus first. Oh, by the way, this is a boss. He's really easy. He just like stuns a person. Kind of like the sacrifice table in uh, Dire Mall East. And then he vanishes and then he tries to take someone's blood. Or in the case of a tree druid, he's trying to get their maple syrup. He tends to emote a lot and just says a bunch of stuff, so a little bit annoying, but you can get past that. And you just run through this little cave here. Remember to duck if you're a tauren or something. You might need to click off a uh, fire water. Okay, now we're going to do another big pull here. This room has a bunch of casters, so my team knows they're going to save their CDs for this. Okay, we got this pull. Spell off like this. I'm going to retaliation this. We just did a bloodlust. Then I'm going to mix in a challenge and shout. I'm just hitting revenge and cleave. Our warriors use a blade storm. I'm going to spell reflect. Send some of those fireballs back. And that's great. That's a good pull. Very big DPS here. I'll show you the current segment DPS. Yeah, our arms warrior did 3.9k there. It's pretty cool that they really buffed the damage of warriors. Especially tank warriors from BC to Wrath. We actually slap now, which is cool. Pretty hype about that. Warrior tanks went from being a pretty good tank for progression, but not the highest threat tank single target and not the highest threat tank AoE. Just kind of bleh when it comes to threat. You could still do everything. Like I tank Sungwell, tank Muru, tank Brutalis, all that. But, um... Yeah, Warrior in Wrath is going to be the Threat God tank. And that's really awesome. Honestly, it's what I prefer. Uh, the word on the street is that we're the squishier tank. 
compared to bears and poundants and DKs, but it's fine. I'm a torn. And yes, they did nerf uh, torn endurance, but that's fine. I welcome the challenge. A lot of people are just stuck on the meta and they just freak out if anything gets nerfed, but it's not a big deal. The thing about Wrath is it's just so high tempo. There's just so much that you can be doing with your rotation, like a stance stance in here. I'm intercepting, I'm sundering stuff. I can build some threat, I can taunt, I can cleave revenge. I'm just getting these guys, these guys get 3k XP each. You could skip this room, this is kind of optional, but we're just doing it just to show you this room. It's really pretty. This is one of the things that I like about this dungeon, is it looks amazing. It's like a spooky, forgotten city deep in the earth in the far north. You would never suspect it. But there's some cave beasts here. I'm just gonna challenge them to Mortal Kombat. You know, test your might, that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna intervene here, using all the tools that I can to keep that tempo going. Remember to be consumed. I'm just burning through some of the TBC level consumes here. But if you are a tank and you're tanking dungeons, you get these nice boxes of Northwind Adventuring Supplies. Let's actually do this boss. I'm gonna tell them. So this boss here, the reason I'm typing this is because whenever we've been doing Zug Zug, uh, just trying to get XP, we've been skipping this one. And we'll probably skip it for the other runs, but I just wanted to show it to you. One note here that calls us to wipe a couple times is make sure the shamans lift totems right now. Because there are a bunch of ants that run up here, and sometimes they just all get hostile and aggro onto you. If you don't lift your totems. Do you see them here? They're going to go up here, and then they're going to put a shield on. And they don't fight you all at once. But we've had a couple times where there's a totem that's on the ground, and then all of them just come in and attack us, and we just instantly die. So we DPS the boss, the boss flies up in the air. You get to play a guessing game of who's going to be chosen. Oh, I guess wrong. Okay, and the boss comes back down. This boss doesn't hit very hard, so I'm kind of Zerka stands dual wielding, just making sure I have threat. I'm getting in some damage. That Thundershock thing hurts, get out. And that's the boss. Pretty easy one. Okay. Shield back on. Charging down here. Sweeping strikes. Defensive stance. Thunderclap. Revenge cleave. Revenge cleave. Revenge cleave. I'm just gonna rocket boots over here. And we'll whirlwind. Gonna get a last stand mixed in here. One thing that you have to be careful about as a warrior tank is your mobility is so dang high that sometimes you can outrange your healer so you want to be ready if you charge ahead like that be prepared to pop a defensive uh, Braun is a really good healer so he knows how to like switch to cat get a sprint in stuff like that but you should be flexible as a tank if your healer is not as strong uh, put more mid on just pull a little bit more slowly it's usually better to have really clean consistent pulls than to have fast risky pulls where you wipe because wiping adds a lot of time just to your tempo and speed. There's these forgotten ones here. These guys actually slap. They hit pretty hard for melee and then they cast this Shadow Crash, which is the same ability of Kill Jaden. See that purple thing? That just hit me for 3.8k. And that's in defensive stance, so it's going to hit other people for more than that. If you're a tree druid, you want to be pretty careful. Oh, they also do a fear. See, he's running out of the way there. Those hit really hard, and the range of the AoE is pretty great. Like, it's that whole area like this. You need to kill these three guys for a quest, but it's just three of them. And then this is the last boss. So he doesn't hit super hard. Again, a little bit of Kill Jaden vibes, because he does a mind play. He has an insanity ability here, which means that everyone has to fight against the party. Like this. So I'm just going to fight these. And once you've killed your own, you can help the 
allies with theirs. And usually your healer is going to just be trying to survive them rather than DPS them down. And I'm going to pop some cooldowns here. We're trying to get it before the second insanity, and we did without Bloodlust. And that's basically the Old Kingdom. This is the best run to just zug through, kill everything, run out, reset, run back in. I'm just going to show you the route back in, just so you're oriented here. The caverns can be kind of tricky. You can get turned around like it's a maze. So we're going to go in here. And it puts you out somewhere different. And you just take a slight right. And then you take a left. And then you have... There's a guy over here. This is a high cultist Zangus. Poor guy. He's having a tough day. And we're going to hang it right here. Over the pool. You can slap some of these if you want to. And then you keep to the left. Keep to the left. There's a summoning stone there. This is a Azul Narub. That dungeon's not nearly as efficient as this one in terms of doing pulls. Reset. And then we'll go again. Well, hope you enjoyed this run. And hope this was useful for you to see how to grind some XP in Wrath of the Lich King doing dungeons. I know there are a lot of different like solo warrior tank stuff, but I wanted to level with my friends, and this is a really good dungeon if you run with a five stack, or if you just have some pugs you meet who are down to farm some dungeons. From me, Brent, ancestors watch over you. Best of luck in y'all's leveling.